Hello and welcome to the Thursday, December 20th, 2018 edition of the Sand Center and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Microsoft today had sort of a special holiday gift for us in the form of an emergency update for Internet Explorer. This patches a vulnerability in Internet Explorer 9 to 11, affecting Windows 7 to 10 and also Server 2008 to 2019. This vulnerability has already been used in the wild against targeted attacks and was originally discovered by Google. The CVE number for this vulnerability is 2018-8653. At this point, I haven't seen an exploit easily available yet for this vulnerability. However, today an exploit was made public against an older vulnerability, CV 2018-8631. This vulnerability also affects JavaScript and was patched this month as part of the regular patch Tuesday. So if you're planning on taking some time off next week, then you probably do want to apply this patch before you're leaving for the weekend. Now, if this vulnerability gets exploited, then one of the common payloads uh, that you may expect is a PowerShell script. And Xavier today had an interesting post about how to restrict the network capabilities of PowerShell. What Xavier is using here is NetShell. Now, NetShell is used to adjust the Windows firewall, among other things. And one feature that Xavier is using here is that you can actually restrict strict traffic based on the binary that originates the traffic. So for example, you could limit PowerShell to only establish connections within the local network, which would prevent PowerShell from downloading malicious software from arbitrary websites. There are of course other tools that can be used in order to establish network connections. Bits Admin comes to mind and that's a tool that's a little bit more difficult to restrict because it is used to download patches and such from various websites. So you have to be a little bit more careful how you restrict it, in particular if you are allowing your users to go out and download patches themselves instead of doing so via an internal repository. And thanks to Eclipsium, we do have a new way to exploit baseboard management controllers. Now, these are the little chips that have been in the headlines uh, quite often recently. This latest attack, I think, is a little bit oversold here by Eclipsium and probably not a surprise if you're listening to this podcast regularly. The problem here is that an attacker that has gotten a hold of a server is often able to flash firmware on the baseboard management controller. And of course, with that, the attacker can then flash malicious firmware. Now, usually people talk here about putting things like backdoors into the firmware. What Eclipsium proposes is actually quite a bit simpler in that they're just uh, then uploading firmware that's destructive, uh, basically overriding UEFI settings and rendering the server unbootable. Now, the headline to Eclipsium's article calls it remotely pricking a server. I don't quite agree with this given that you first need to get a local foothold on the server before you can actually upload the malicious firmware. Attacks like this, of course, have been known to be possible with systems like IPMI and other remote control options for systems. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.